It wasn't me. I'm just upset. Like, what? Is, when are people going to learn you don't play home games when you are being I don't know, People be stupid. You do not play home games. Yeah, it's so disrespectful. Curious. Even if you think they're going to be out of town. And you think the thing is that if you play home games and you're being nefarious, you are upping your chances exponentially of getting caught. Because then let's say they leave a bra behind, a thong, an earring, something, and then a toenail. Not they don't know this ain't my toenails. You got a bitch in here. You know what I'm saying? It could you be anything. Why would you not go to a hotel? Why would you not go to their place? Why would you? There's so many other avenues. Y'all could have fucked in the mm. woods. Y'all just didn't even, you know, y'all should mm. be thinking. Mm hmm. <laughs> I guess you could not cheat at all. That's what I I'm was thinking saying. this if, whole time, but here we are. <laughs> right. But like, if if that's just what you need to do, look, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but I am going to tell you that there you are- You don't never need to cheat. Themselves. You don't need to. Like, I don't I don't know what's going on in their relationship. But what I do know is that that was not the best way to approach that situation. That's all I know. All right, let's get it going. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to another Tubi Movie Review. And today's movie, oh, it was, we had time watching <laughs> this one. The name of it, Thrones. And we're going to let uh, Les take it away. This was her pick, so please enlighten us. Tell us about Two Wrongs. Man. All right, yeah, so man. Two Wrongs. I actually watched this um, back in January. My ex's mom actually said we should watch it. And boy, was I like, well, what did we just watch afterwards? Um, which is why I thought it would be a perfect movie to review, because that's what Tubi is all about. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it actually came out in 2015, but they did have a Two Wrongs 2 that just came out this year, actually like within like the last month or two, I want to say. So at some point, we'll probably end up reviewing that. So just look out for that. But um, some background information. It's co-directed by Shell Purcell and Karim Shylon. They are also the producers along with Michael Lee Bowie. The writer is Shell Purcell, so she wears many hats because she's also that's a mouthful. Shell Purcell. How, how, Shell you, Purcell. Say, how are you even saying that? Well? A- Shell Purcell. S C H E L L E. So I'm pretty sure her name is probably like Michelle. She probably shortened it to Shell. I feel like. Good, good for, um, good for her. But she wears many hats. Not only is she director, producer, and writer, she's also the star of the movie. She plays Liberty, the wife. Mm-hmm. Really? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shell for Yeah, so she did it all. This is her baby, clearly. So um, let's just jump right into it. <laughs> y'all, y'all buckle up because it's going to be a ride. This movie was a doozy. So it starts off with Liberty, uh, who is a wife. She is home early from a trip to Chicago. She actually has two uh, psychiatrist offices, one in Chicago and one in her hometown. She comes home early to surprise her husband, um, and she ends up being surprised because after she makes it home, after hanging with the girls at the bar, she walks in on her husband having sex with Pastor Daniel's wife, Lydia. Now, instead of making it known that she's there or freaking out or saying something, she quietly just exits the room. She grabs Lydia's license, and then she goes directly to Pastor Daniel's house to give her Lydia's license with proof that she is over at her house sleeping with her man. So after that, she goes back to the bar that she was at with her friends, and she ends up meeting a man named Anderson Lovely. Um, He'll come back into play a little later, but they, you know, flirt. He buys her drinks. They exchange numbers, and that's that. She ends up going to a hotel for the night, um, and... First thing in the morning, her husband calls her to see where she is. She lies and says it's going to be another day before she gets home because she's trying to figure out, you know, how she wants to handle this. And so then Pastor Daniel comes in and he, you know, is distraught and he makes a move on Liberty. He ends up kissing her, but she backs off like, no, we can't be like them. We have to be better to them. And you have to go because my friends are coming and this is not going to look right if they see me in my robe and you in my room. As soon as she opens that door, her friend Vanessa, which Vanessa is a character, she walks in and <laughs> she uh, immediately assumes they just, you know, slept together. So Liberty has to tell her, like, no, I actually caught, you know, my husband cheating with his wife last night. And so he was here to check on me type of thing. And so Liberty immediately, her other two friends come in and Liberty immediately says she just wants to go straight for a divorce because she 
knows that if she divorces him because he cheated, then she'll receive $350,000 because he messed up. He comes from a, a family of wealth because they've had a law firm within their family for over 40 years. So she knows she'll get a nice piece of that pie. So with that being said, her friend Vanessa, who is also a lawyer, is like, well, you need actual proof that he cheated. Can you get that? And so Liberty's like, yeah, I know his schedule. He thinks I'm still out of town. He won't be home right now. I'll go get some camera equipment, install it, and I'm sure I'll catch him cheating with Lydia today because he's predictable. She knows her husband, you know, is a very yeah. sexual man. She done her multiple times. And so she's like, I know he's going to do it again. So she ends up going home to put in the camera installation and apparently she don't know his schedule or maybe he just wasn't on his same routine because he comes home early. So she really like hops in the shower and he comes in and he's like, you know, what are you doing home? She's like, I wanted to surprise you, you know, lying to him, of course, and they end up having sex. So fast forward to the next day, um, they're getting ready for church. Lydia calls Kevin's phone and Liberty answers it. And Lydia makes up, you know, this lie type of thing or whatever. But it's already skeptical because one, she already knows they're sleeping together. But two, even if she didn't know, that would be kind of weird. Like, why is the pastor's wife calling my husband on behalf of the pastor when the pastor and Kevin have each other's numbers? That's very skeptical or whatever. So uh, we fast forward to uh, them at church. Of course, the girls, like, confront Lydia, but they don't say anything about the cheating. They just give her, like, those mean girl stares. Like, we, we know what you're doing without saying anything because Lydia, of course, is like, oh, I just talked to Kevin. He's going to volunteer, yada, yada, yada. Fast forward to um, Vanessa meeting a man by the name of Jason Keys at the bar. He's um, in newscasting, I believe it was, or journalism. Hold that thought on them. We're going to keep going and come back to them. So Liberty goes out of town, back to Chicago. She spends some time with Anderson Lovely. She basically tells him all about Kevin cheating and how she just wants him to be like, kind of like a friends with benefit without the benefit part. Like she just wants to cuddle with him, be able to talk to him, but she doesn't want to like do anything that's going to jeopardize her possibly cheating and losing out on the 350,000 grand. Cause that's what her goal is to get that money. So then we go to Liberty seeing the video of uh, Kevin cheating on her phone because she has the camera access on her phone and she actually sees him sleeping with Vanessa. And so she doesn't really have a reaction to it. So you're kind of like, okay, does she know about that? Is she like cool? Just that part confused me. It's, it's very confusing. I was like, is that Vanessa know. or no? Mm-hmm. I just think she knew Vanessa was a hoe and she was just like, oh, hoes be hoes. I mean, they've been mm-hmm. friends in middle school, so maybe so. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's just like, hoes be hoes. Mm-hmm. So after watching that, she ends up telling Pastor Daniels to meet her at her office. So then we go to um, Jason Keys seeing Eric and Vanessa at the bar. He ends up flirting with Erica. And so Erica and Vanessa have a conversation because Vanessa is putting on this front like, oh, I don't date black men, you know, I don't care type of thing. But you can tell that like she felt the way when Jason was flirting with her friend Erica in front of her face. And so we're going to put a pin on Vanessa saying she don't like black men because we soon find out that was a lie. Um, So... (laughs) Liberty <laughs> ends up showing Pastor Daniels the video of um, Kevin sleeping with Lydia, which happened three hours after he slept with Vanessa on camera. So Kevin be busy. He be busy, busy and, and nasty. So um, he, I appreciate she, that stamina that man clears in the gym. <laughs> That's it's, disgusting. And I'm yeah, sure he didn't shower. Was, yeah, which is why... Well, we'll keep going and you'll see why that's nasty because anyway. So she also shows him sleeping with Vanessa. And so Pastor Daniel's kind of like, well, what's that about? And Liberty kind of just shrugs it off like, oh, she's just helping me get proof type of thing. Which again, I'm kind of like, is she cool with this? Or is she just like, you know, trying to wait and see what happens? So um, then we fast forward to... um, Kevin see oh I missed the part I missed the part when um Liberty and Kevin actually go out to dinner after she gets back home after the shower scene them having sex and Pastor Daniels and Lydia are actually there at dinner and her and Pastor and Daniels have go and have a conversation and they have sex yes right there mm-hmm. like 
you know, being like at dinner while their spouses are waiting for they them. They were in the bathroom, y'all. They weren't like in the middle of the restaurant. But it was still it. like out in the open. Like anybody could have walked in. The open. I don't remember not locking the door. Yeah, it didn't look like a stall. <laughs> and they they weren't in a stall, right? Unless it was like a single, you know, single. I assumed it was a single restroom in my mind. Maybe so. <laughs> um, Pastor Daniels and Liberty are having a conversation about like trying to be better than their spouses, trying not to like stoop to their level type of thing, but they end up having sex again in her office. So when Liberty gets home, Kevin found a receipt from the hotel she stayed in the night that she saw him cheating. And he automatically assumes that she's cheating on him. And she's trying to tell him, like, you don't want to go wrong road, Kevin. You don't want to go down this road because I'm not the one cheating with her. Technically, she is, but it was after him. But anyway. Um, and so she was in just that moment. Back. Right, right. And in that moment, um, Lydia, Lydia's timing. She actually calls Kevin again and immediately Liberty puts it on speakerphone and all you hear is, Hey baby. It's like, girl, this is a married man. You don't you don't answer the phone like that. Like, come on. Cheated one on one. But um that's when Liberty basically like lets know, like, I know you've been cheating on me type of stuff. Like, you know, Lydia, yeah, yeah, yada. So that same moment, Lydia tries to seduce Pastor Daniels, basically, you know, trying to like rev it up in their bedroom. Um, now that she's been caught, but she's still she's still gonna try to play it off like they're not sleeping together. But they end up uh going to Pastor Daniels' fifth year anniversary dinner. Um Kevin and Lydia sneak off to a closet. Lydia's making it clear that she don't want Kevin sleeping with his own wife. They end up having sex in a closet. The nerve of these side bitches. The nerve. <laughs> How yes. you gonna tell the me? Nerves. I told you not to fuck her anymore. What? How you gonna tell me that? Like, aren't you married too? What is wrong with you? Right. Right. Exactly. So there's commotion right outside the closet door. But I mean, technically, you should have listened because that lady, we'll get in there. We'll get there. Yeah, it, it, it takes a turn for the worse. So, um, yeah, so Eric, uh, Erica and Vanessa actually get out, get into a fight right outside the closet door um, over Jason because he came with Erica as her date. Um, and Erica ends up opening the door because she hears noises behind it and out walks Kevin and Lydia. So now they're trying to play it off. Mind you, Vanessa has stormed off or whatever. Mind you, they're trying to uh, play it off like nothing happened. Lydia says, oh, we're trying to plan a party for Liberty, yada, yada. And Erica's like, I'm her best friend. Why a private party. Planning a private party. Behind the closet. <laughs> a private, party. Like, private party in the closet. Exactly. So then... I'm up in the closet. Kevin's... Oh, gosh. Kevin's phone starts to ring, and everyone can see that it's Vanessa calling. So now they're like, why is Vanessa calling you out of all people? So that raises some eyebrows. So... Vanessa goes to uh, Liberty's office uh, while Erica is there. They, of course, start fighting again. Um, and Liberty ends up showing Vanessa that she has camera footage of Kevin and Lydia. Vanessa is getting nervous because she's like, oh, she got this footage. She could possibly have footage on me. But Liberty plays it off saying like, oh, this is the only footage I have. And Vanessa's like, okay, well, I'll start the paperwork. I'll have it drawn up and get it back to you. So then Jason goes to Vanessa's house. They have a heated argument about Vanessa's, like, you know, feeling away about him with Erica. They end up having sex again for the second time. <laughs> and then Kevin comes over as Jason is taking a shower right after. And that's when Erica arrives right after Kevin. So now, again, it's the four of them in the in Vanessa's apartment trying to figure out, okay, why are why you is here? Why are you here? here type of stuff? Exactly. So um, they all get into a big fight, and then the truth about Vanessa sleeping with Kevin comes out. So, Miss, I don't sleep with black men, but she's been sleeping with two black men. Hmm. So um, she said she didn't sleep with a lot Eric, of black men, just only two. No, because she, she clearly said, "Once you go black, you never go back." She's like, "I'm not ready for that." She's like, "I don't sleep with black men," but clearly. So, um, Liberty, Erica, and Julie are having lunch when they start discussing everything that's been happening with everyone involved. And Liberty decides to, like, kind of keep quiet about having Vanessa on tape until the divorce is final. Hey, hey y'all. It's your boy, Tris. It's your girl, Liz. And I'm Sean the Don. And we are Culture, Culture 101. 101. Formerly known as the Millennial Masterclass. We're the same old millennials. And now we're pushing the culture forward.
We're going to fast forward to them at Liberty's grand opening. Vanessa gives her the envelope with what she assumes her divorce papers. Turns out there's photos of her with Pastor Daniels and uh, Anderson Lovely in there. Or was it just Anderson No, Lovely? it was just, it was, it was her and Pastor Daniels. It was both. That's what it was, her and Pastor Daniels. Um, but, okay, and... but, okay, so just a side note here. How did they get pictures from that mm-hmm. bathroom? Who the fuck was in that bathroom taking pictures of them? There right. was a picture that made saying, no sense. I was like, who was in that bathroom getting pictures of this? Who? Who got that? Shout who got that out. angle? Who snuck party. in the fucking vent? Who did that? Like, the door was closed. How'd you get in there? They would have seen somebody else yeah. in there. And it's like, this Tubi shit. It's Tubi. Mm-hmm. It's giving so pretty much. Very, and that's why I love it. So pretty much because she was caught cheating as well, she wasn't going to get the 350000 which I assume is why they decided to stay together. Because we fast forward to six months later, and Miss Liberty is pregnant, cooking a nice dinner. You get a baby. You get a baby. Okay. So they're cooking dinner for their friends. They're hosting, you know. It's Thanksgiving, uh, dinner too. It's Thanksgiving. And yeah, that's what it was, Thanksgiving. And they actually invite Vanessa. They make it clear none of them have seen Vanessa in the last six months, but they've been talking over the phone. Vanessa pops up pregnant as, as well. Fuck. Same, I mean, same time frame. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, Liberty shot because she's like, we talk like three times a week, you know, for this whole six months. At no point did you mention, like, hey, I have a baby inside. And it could be of your husband's baby. Um, Exactly. So Liberty is frustrated. She's upset. Um, she's sending slugs Vanessa's way, but Vanessa throws him back like you too was out here. Yeah, you know but that's you my know. business. Mind your business. That's the th- no, because she had no right to say shit. I don't even want to hear that shit. Talk about some you yeah, too. She Bitch, had nothing. Did you not fuck my husband? Shut the fuck up then. Shut the fuck up. Are you talking my homegirl that we've been friends for this long? Shut the fuck up. You don't concern yourself where I put my vagina. You need to concern yourself where you put your fucking <laughs> vagina. I'm sorry. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> oh, Trevor is into it. All Ooh, right. the dumbest shit ever. Like, how the fuck? You don't have a leg to stand up with your dumb... Like, you a lawyer. You trying to lawyer yourself right out of this shit. You look like a dumbass. Like, mm-hmm. And then everybody was upset that she was getting into her. I'm like, funny. why are you upset she getting in that ass? Y'all should all be getting in her ass right now. I don't give a fuck if she is pregnant. Let these two pregnant women fight. She shouldn't have been at that table. Facts. She better than me. I would not have. She should have came with a with a parka um, on or something. Child. So Liberty actually tries to attack Vanessa across the table and then basically tells her to get out. So um, Liberty has been upset. She's not eating. She's just trying to figure out basically what's going on when her friend Julie pops up and brings her, you know, some snacks and basically talks about whether or not Kevin or Pastor Daniels could possibly be the, you know, father of her child. And Liberty is kind of in denial. She doesn't want to, like, think about it, talk about it. She just wants Kevin to be the father. So Julie asked her, does Kevin know there's a chance he might not be the father? And she was like, no, he doesn't know. But at that same moment, Kevin is walking in to bring Liberty he lunch is. and he overhears that, yeah. With that, with that brown paper bag that had nothing in it, I'm like, they could have gave it like. You don't know. There was a couple whole of Twinkies in there. You don't know. She was so, bringing her snacks. <laughs> clearly, everybody just giving her snacks and no real food. So Kevin immediately calls Pastor Daniel to meet because they haven't spoken um, in the last six months either. Him and Liberty stopped really going to church. They visit some other church, but they weren't attending. And so he basically tells Pastor Daniels, did you know that my wife is pregnant and that there's a chance that you could be the father? And of course, Pastor Daniels is shocked. He has no idea. Um, and then we move on to Jason confronting Vanessa and asking him, asking her why she didn't tell him that he could possibly be the father of this baby or she was pregnant at all. So there's a lot of, you know, confusion with these babies and who's going to be the father because nobody knows. This show would have been so, great for Ricky Lake, you know what I mean? Oh yes, back in the day. For for sure. You mm-hmm. are um, the father. So this is as if the babies weren't enough. This is when it really goes downhill. Right? This is when so, it really goes downhill. This is when it goes down. <laughs> Leslie, we already down the fucking hill. I think it been we down already down the hill. It's just getting deeper. We already had We're our going some fucking grace. mud right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we had to think of it right. Um, that's when Pastor Daniel's in the kitchen, like preparing some food for Lydia, and she asked, you know, him to bring his mess. She's not feeling well. For them, she's upstairs and... sick. She's in upstairs exactly. sick. Exactly. Exactly. 
and he sees the envelope in a purse and he pulls it out and he reads whatever's on this letter and he is just distraught. I knew exactly what it was as soon as he grabbed that letter. I saw the bill model in the letter. I was like, I'm going to put a package. Got the package. (laughs) So he immediately puts it back in the purse and takes her the food, says he has to go run some errands to check on her later. He goes back down to grab the letter and then he leaves. He meets Liberty at the church and asks her why she didn't tell him about her pregnancy and that he could possibly be the father. And he informs Liberty that Liddy is HIV positive. Mm. So Liberty ends up freaking out so much that she starts feeling like severe pain um, in her belly and she immediately is taken to the hospital. And Kevin comes running in, freaking out, trying to see what's going on with Liberty. Doctor says she'll be fine. And says that she'll get those special test results that she asked for back to her. And that's when Liberty tells Kevin, Lydia tested positive. You need to get tested. Kevin's immediate thought, I'm going to go I kill get it. Lydia. I like, get it. He's like, I'm going to call the doctor. <laughs> then he goes to kill Lydia. That's a reasonable, that's a reasonable thought. I get sure. that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Sure. Sure. So uh, Kevin rings the doorbell. Busts in as soon as Lydia opens it. Starts strangling her. Pastor Daniel comes down. From behind, trying to pull Kevin off, they tussle a little bit. Um, it, it, and then, was there a, was there a moment Kevin where, that scene them. where you thought to yourself, he might let her strangle him? Just he just the pastor just might let him do it. He might just let him do it. <laughs> he he might just let him do it because he's just right. angry, but he can't do it. So <laughs> right, he's right, right, right. So That's I was like, true. I didn't think he would. Yeah, so. Um, we fast forward to, uh, well, Kevin threatens both of them saying, you know, if any of them are HIV positive, then he's, you know, going to come back and kill Libby pretty much. So fast forward to the girl sitting in Liberty's room and she tells them what's going on. And Vanessa just looks stunned, you know, that she could possibly be exposed. And she just quietly picks up her purse and walks out. Doesn't say nothing. That was the best. Uh, <laughs> probably so then uh we go to lydia in an aa meeting where she admits that she has been a functioning heroin addict um and she did test positive for hiv she says she was clean for over a year when she met pastor daniels and she admits that just the pressure of being like a pastor's wife trying to be perfect and uphold this image became too much and she uh started drinking and basically fell back <clears throat> into going into our old neighborhood and that's where she started using again and from using again, that's when she became HIV positive. And she, um, you know, feels remorse because she's exposed so many people and she knows that. And so then we go to both Vanessa and Liberty going into labor at the same time. We see Kevin support in Liberty and Jason support <laughs> Vanessa. Both women have healthy baby boys. Both of the, you know, men are excited. Talking about what they're going to, you know, do with their boys playing ball. Ain't and nobody stuff taking stuff. a DNA test. Yet. And then we go to Ain't nobody up. taking a DNA test yet. That's all. Mm-mm. I don't nobody want to know nothing. Mm-mm. So then we go to Pastor Daniel's announcing that he'll be taking a leave of absence from the church. This is of course after um, finding out that you know he was exposed and just with everything going on, he think it's best to take a step back. Um, so as he's shaking hands outside of the church, Liberty walks through with holding her son. And then um, Kevin comes up, you know, she asked if he could take the baby to the car. She could speak to Pastor Daniels. And he confirms with Liberty that he is positive and everyone else is negative. Um, And that Pastor uh, Liberty says that KJ, which is Kevin Jr., is Kevin's, you know, in Kevin's mind. But as she's hugging Pastor Daniels, she says that he has your eyes. And then Pastor Daniel says, he should, he's my son. He's my son. Mm, mm, and mm. that's when Lydia and Kevin walked in, right upon hearing those words. And the movie ends. And that's why I can't wait for, to see the second one, to see what happens. But how do how did we feel about two wrongs? There was a lot going on in two um, wrongs I'm and ten wrongs, apparently. Yeah. That movie was all over the place. Um, <laughs> everybody sleeping with everybody, and everybody husband, and then the AIDS, and I did. It, it was all over the place. But <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie, I enjoyed the movie. Were you not entertained? <laughs> I was entertained. I was very much entertained. Um, I'll save my rating till later, but I was very much it was entertained. A fucked up soap opera. 
that's what was going on. It was a real fucked up soap opera. <laughs> like I was so irritated the whole time sure. watching this dumb movie. And then like the acting, the acting got progressively better throughout the movie. I will say that in the beginning, I was like, y'all are not doing a very good job. This is exactly what I've come to expect from the Tubi movie. <laughs> but as the, as the as the progressed on, the parts, the acting, the action, the cinematography got a little bit better. Um, maybe they had a bigger budget at that point. I don't fucking know. But I just, that movie was so ridiculous. And then like, and then like just on top of it, it just kept getting worse and worse. And then like, I swear to God, I thought the movie was over. And then there was another 40 minutes left. I was like, what is going on here? Like, it was wild. Like, yes. you gotta, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like we went I felt the same to, way. We double infidelity to a setup to um to you not getting able to do the infidelity thing then we got double pregnancy then we got like double aids and then we got a secret then we got a secret father like what the fuck just occurred and everybody was just cool they was just like yeah man it's a good movie like they had good if you look at the comments and shit everybody was like, oh, my God, this is great it sucked me right in it's like you are ridiculous that's what the fuck this is like I just I can't even I I'm I'm honestly upset that they made another, and I just can't even imagine how ridiculous I this was gonna I be. I, I assume they're gonna start off with a murder. I assume it's gonna start off mm. with a murder, and that murder is gonna be of a little person that um was in the church that actually had sex with Kevin and was pregnant too. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Like it's just this is just ridiculous. It might be another infidelity or another. That's what I'm saying. Like, like the baby fucked somebody and got somebody pregnant. Right. Like, I don't know. Like this shit is wild. Oh. It's wild. It's ridiculous. I'm upset about oh my it. God. I'm happy they got black folk working that's beautiful. I would just I would like us to tell a few other stories. Like that don't surround the church and the pastor and a lawyer and aid and a white woman. And it was just every, just every little black trope you could find that was ridiculous. They put in there. They did not waste any space. And they made a beautiful concoction. Like they mixed a yeah, little bit of this, a little yeah, bit of that, a little yeah. bit of trauma. Because bit it of was everything. getting boring. Like it, it was, was definitely right boring. Like I was having a hard time like picking up. And then at the end, you're just well, let's just figure out what happened mm-hmm. at this point. Because there were like three points in the movie, maybe four. But I was like, it ain't over yet. Yeah. God damn! What else can you? What else can you throw on top of this? <laughs> So, Tristan, I was like you the first time I watched it. I was very much like, what did I just watch? This is a mess. This is crazy. It was a little bit boring as well in the beginning and stuff like that. However, watching it a second time for this review, I'm like... Why? Why do you want that? They can give us better movies. Come to be movie for me. I I thoroughly enjoyed it because like it's full of mess. They threw everything up in there. It's great. It's great because we have great movies. Do we? we have the. Yeah. We, have the we don't have enough. We ain't got we nearly the enough movies that we need. The historical ones. We have the comedies. We have the drama. We have all, we have those movies. Yeah. We need there is like, a space for low budget movies. I want black yeah. Interstellar. Yeah. I want a black yeah. Interstellar. Okay, like I want black. Everything. Them. Why everything got to be black excellence? Why can't we have black ignorance? Not black. everything. Just a couple things. One good black sci-fi movie. I'll wait. Name you one. Because don't exist. I don't, you know what it is. I don't, don't watch exist. sci-fi, so I couldn't name you one sci-fi movie with black or white people. That's not true. You know a sci-fi movie. Fair. You know Men in Black. You ain't never seen Men in Black? That's sci-fi? Aliens. Any type of alien movie is sci-fi. Oh, I thought, I don't know. Sure. Sure. My thing is, it's kind of like why I watch like certain reality shows that I watch, like the love and hip hops and stuff, it's because I like this is so far removed from like how I would behave and what I would be involved in that it's just entertaining. Yeah. Same thing with this. This wasn't like, that far I'm removed. This is happening right now somewhere. Movie. This is happening right now. I'm talking about my life, right person. No, movie. I'm talking about in my life. Like I'm not gonna be like love and hip hop. I'm not gonna be at a bar with my friends, cussing people out, throwing drinks, and having a fight. That's right. Movie. Right. Same thing with this. I'm not going to be married, have my husband cheat on me, me cheat on him. We have babies, be exposed to eight. like You I'm don't know. You don't actually know. You don't she know. absolutely no. Because that. as soon as I would have, as, as soon as I would have caught him cheating, I would have been like, uh, uh-uh. uh, I would have put my phone, I recorded right then and there, so I had the proof, and then I would have stopped. Like, uh, uh-uh. uh, I see you. Like, I wouldn't have went and had this whole. I would have confronted them. I would have confronted them for sure. I'm going directly yeah. to the lawyer. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Because it wouldn't have been. We wouldn't even waste the time. Exactly. I'd have just been like. Because exactly. you're talking about you didn't have proof. It was right there. You saw it. Go right in the room right now. You could have put your phone everybody. Everybody looks good there. Your skin looks wonderful. 
my God, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then I'd have filmed it. I'd have took a license just like I did. I might have gotten a lick in. And then I left. I don't fucking love. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Google should have been right 10 there. minutes long. So. Google should have been 10 minutes long. Facts. Facts. We can stop right here. So, yeah. So, like I said, it was very entertaining. I enjoyed it. Uh. I think it does do it for the culture for me personally. Cause like you said, like Sean said, we need these type of movies as well. It's all about balance. Black people are not a monolith. So we're not gonna be like Are you sure? Because the there's a lot of movies, movies. like this. There's a lot of movies like this. There's a lot of movies like this. I like this. You know what I'm saying? Like How this. many new concepts are there in movies? I don't know, but black people seem to Facts. go back. That's why they to do all, so many remakes. They go back to all their favorite ones. Like I, 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 I'm struggling right now to think of any other, any other ethnicity or anything that has a movie similar to this. I'm struggling right now. I don't know. Do you watch a lot of Indian movies? Because they ratchet. Movies? I do. They ratchet. I do oh, that, and them Nollywood, <laughs> Bollywood and movies. Them Nollywood, be, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nollywood and Bollywood. They be, they be serving it. So don't sleep on them. I, I, um, does this do it no, for the culture for no, you, it doesn't. Tristan? It doesn't do it like for the culture. Okay. I wish it would do something else that was not the culture. Okay. I do something else far, far away. It does a photo culture for so me. So, Sean, I assume yeah. it does. Okay, I, I can't lie to My you. Girl. Mm-hmm. I, I thoroughly girl. enjoyed it. Let's put the ratings on it, ladies. What, what you giving it, Les? What you giving it? How many fish you giving it? I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a strong four. Damn! Four? For Out of five? Movie. You have to think of the, the 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 context of what we're doing here. Yeah. Tubi movie review for Tubi is a strong four because it got all the messiness in it. But you didn't give cinnamon a four. That's what no, I'm saying. Cinnamon, I told you cinnamon was too good for Tubi. What the fuck? What kind of shit is that? Okay, it's just I'm, too good. I'm giving it a a, a three point five. Mm. That's that's, that's kind of hot. That's kind of hot, personally. No, what you no, giving it a two or two point five, Tristan? I'm giving it a two for sure. A strong two. two. I'm giving it a strong two because someone actually thought out the cinematography moments. The acting did get better. I did mostly believe people in the role. I hated her friend with that one wig. That wig was so bad. The one light skinned friend. Oh, Julie. Wig. I couldn't yeah, stand her. Yeah. I just wanted her to disappear. Like, I don't know who's what favor you paid to be in this bitch, but you don't need to be in this <laughs> because Dang. I just that really bothered me. But uh, the pastor, he didn't really quite feel like a pastor to me. Like I felt like in his mind, he thought he, he was, was a handsome. pastor. And then, but then there were better moments. Like when he was doing the consultations, I felt like those were his best acting moments. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy who played Kevin, he was somewhere between Lothario, and he just didn't feel like a lawyer to me. I didn't. Did he didn't get? Really, he, yeah. This might be just bad to say. You might need to cut this out. But didn't he look like he might have had top surgery? Like the way. <laughs> The way the muscles sit, I could have sworn I seen a live underneath. Like it was. I, I, I think he always had a penis. I think he always had a penis. I don't. I don't. I don't think he had top surgery. I understand why you said that, but no. Because then you see like a line, and just the way they no, were sitting, it was no. giving like. I didn't notice that. Had, no, no. I understand why you said what you said, but no. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's a cis hetero dude. I really do. Okay, I, I don't mean to offend. I apologize. I, I don't even think it's offensive. I understand why you said what you said, but I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's. And I could be wrong. It could be exactly what you say. But I don't. I don't think it is. I really don't. Which nothing is wrong with it. You know? No, not at all. I just two star, two two fists is getting two, and it barely got that. I wanted to give it one point five. But I respect the fact that they color graded it and it looked uh, better than Days of Our Lives. So I accept I accept your offering, and I'll okay. give it two star. I will give it two two. I feel star. like once we watch the second one and it really ties everything together, you're gonna. Come what do you mean ties everything together? Ain't gonna tie <laughs> everything. Ain't gonna tie. It's tie what? What's in a tie? <laughs> what? <laughs> What else could you tie in? Is somebody grandpa coming out fucking somebody now? What's going on? Kevin, like, oh, you know, God. I fucked your grandmother once. Like, what? <laughs> I just felt like you might change your rating once you watch this thing. Like, if it had been a horror movie or something and it had been this ridiculous, I'd have been like, I accept that. This is a horror movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. But, like, y'all are over here trying to steep this in real life, talking about we're going to make a serious drama. Y'all going to make some serious bullshit. This is what y'all going to do. That's fine. That's well. fine. Like what's what's, what's her name? Rochelle Rochelle Bilal? Shell Purcell. 
<laughs> what did you say? Shell Bilal, whatever her name is. Shell Purcell. Look, Shell Purcell. I don't, I'm not coming at you specifically. I mean, a little bit. But I'm not coming at you specifically. <laughs> it's her baby. You coming at her directly. Right. I, I want to let you know, I respect you as a filmmaker. You got it made. You got people to show up. Like, that's already amazing. Shout mm-hmm. out to you. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a black woman doing your thing. But, like, I, I need you. To, I'm going to need you to think just a little bit harder next time pin this script just a little a touch harder just get a little deeper but you know whatever it's, it's fine shout out to him <laughs> all right well i recommend y'all watch it it's entertaining don't run, don't watch this shit, don't watch this shit. There's other I movies. Say it's too it. long it's too long it's over it was like an hour long. and a half no it's it's, it's over it two like, hours it's like an hour and like 50 minutes I yeah, think, it's almost two hours like long that. yeah it didn't feel like two hours it felt long. I, I, I see what you were saying, though, Tristan, because you would you would think uh, before, like right at the six month part, that's when they were like in the movie. But then six months and after, they kept going. and they just kept going. Like, like I did not think we were gonna get that Thanksgiving scene. I was like, well, this is refreshing and yet unnecessary. But okay, that's that's fine. Like I felt like that could have yeah. that could have been a phone call, but that's fine. I get it. They they needed some more screen time. I get it. It should have been a phone call. Yeah, that was the whole point. But all right. All right. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think y'all should watch it. And, you know, we'll eventually get around to two wrongs, too. We may need to give Tristan some time in between. I'm going to need, I'm gonna need two months eventually. because that shit's ridiculous. Oh. I'm so upset. Now we sit there watching that whole shit and talking about, you know what? This was all right. It wasn't. It wasn't all right. It wasn't. It wasn't all right. It wasn't even. No. No. <laughs> But that's all right. Maybe two wrongs, too. They had a better budget. You know, and we'll, and we'll, and we'll come back until the next time. But all right, then. Well, you're you're picking the one, so you should. I'm picking the worst the fucking possible movie I can find. The worst possible. Oh, movie. sounds good. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm excited. Well, all right, y'all. Until the next time, this has been the, the Collective of Culture 101 signing off for the next 2B review. Mm-hmm.